We have rolled into Park City, Utah for the annual Big Sky Kickoff. I'm Sean Rainey, joined by Ben Wyman. Yeah, David Angelo, this is going to be a fun night. I'm live here in the Reno Event Center, and right behind me, the Montana State men are warming up. Welcome to the Grizzly Sports Report. I'm your host, Sean Rainey. I'm in a kayak. It's a little short for my legs here, but... Here Welcome, we everyone, live to Ogren so Park, Allegiance Field. I'm Mr. Hot Dog, joined by Sir Hamburger. We just got done running the food race. I'm going to actually go with the... No, get out of here. <laughs> with the Grizzlies, baby. <laughs> They're going to win 31 to 20. Mark my words, you're here to hear first. So without further ado, it's time to meet the newest playmaker on the Grizzly football team. T-1000. Welcome everyone to Washington as the Grizz and the Huskies are one day away from battling it out. I mean, we were booked to stay here through Saturday. We don't want to be coming <laughs> home to Montana anytime soon. Welcome back to the Grizzly Sports Port, joined by head coach Bob Stitt. <laughs> say this locker room is nice would be an understatement. Check it out. All right, we are teeing it up here at the Ranch Club. We're on the number seven. Here is the host of the Schwain game. It's Sean Rainey! Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the Schwain game. Let's get one on the board. Oh! oh. Hey! And what is that? It's eggs, bacon, Egg, cheese. Bacon. It's good even though it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> He'll eat anything, anytime. And there's some kids over here that are talking about eating us. So, live from Ogren Park, hot dog and hamburger. Out. The Montana State Bobcats are cutting down the nets here in Reno as they are your 2017 Big Sky Conference champions. Yeah, guys, well, we found out who Montana State is going to be playing, and it's the University of Washington. They will be going to Seattle. For Kyle Sherman, I'm Sean Rainey, live here in rainy Seattle. We'll send it back to you, David and Angela. Yeah, Clara, it didn't go in uh, Montana State's favor, but they played an absolute tremendous game. Bobby is back. Robert has returned. Hauk is home. Welcome into the SWX studio, everyone. I'm Sean Rainey. What are you doing? Are you getting your hair cut? <laughs> I'm, I'm a busy guy. I didn't have time to, to get my hair cut yet. Well, moving on, I'd like to end tonight talking about a fellow sports guy. And in the sports media community in Montana, it's a small one. We all know each other. And although we're technically competitors, we often all form friendships while either chit-chatting in an Osprey game or at a local high school game. And that was the case for everyone who came across the former weekend sports anchor for K-Pax, Dan Semino, who passed away this weekend after a fight with cancer. Now, Dan and I immediately became friends. He invited me to be in his fantasy basketball league, and he would make these videos like you see here for our draft order. Dan always had a smile on his face, had so much energy, and, well, he loved showing off his dance skills. <laughs> he was a big L.A. sports fan and, like me, also loved the Chargers. And while shooting Grizz soccer games, we complained to each other about them you know, blowing another lead, and he was around in my age in his upper 20s, taken way too soon, and, you know, kind of really makes you question how fair life can be sometimes. What I do know is I was lucky enough to have known him and called him my friend, and that he made the world a better place for everyone else who knew him as well. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Our sports director, Sean Rainey, just got off the phone with Haslam. He joins us now to tell us about that conversation. Sean? Yeah, so... This all started with complaints from players at the end of the 2017 season. It was then that Haslam said the university acted immediately. He says they went to their Title IX rep who did a culture survey with the team to get more information. After finding sufficient information from the survey, that's when they looked through the phone records in December of 2017. Gene Gee, Associate AD, noticed numbers associated with an escort service in Las Vegas. She investigated that and became aware to Haslam about a week ago. It was then that he made the decision to not renew Pacorsa's contract. All right, happy Halloween, everyone. We got the whole crew from Toy Story here. We got Buzz Lightyear. What does Buzz say? To infinity and beyond. But I'm excited for tomorrow because I have no idea what's going to happen against Eastern at all. It's like when I'm watching my Chargers and uh -huh. they keep saying San Diego Chargers. Yeah, absolutely. They're LA. You know, you get stuck in the past. Uh -huh. And it's uh, time to pay up on some bets. <sighs> okay, go. Oh! oh! That tastes so good. Absolutely the game of the night. Both teams coming off big wins in week one. Early rivalry game. Let's get to the highlights. Special teams will kick this one off. Caden Messer, him and Elias DeWaters running away. We're thinking we're going to have an opening kickoff touchdown. 
But check out the nice tackle by Hunter Dutton. He mm. neckties in there to save the touchdown, but that was only saving it for a couple seconds as Ryan Ort finds the waters in the back of the end zone. Seven zip. He's hey, the ben, real deal. Have you ever watched the movie Cars? I have. So you know Mater, he drives really well doing what? Uh, backwards? No, going in reverse. Uh. Going in reverse. Jason Shustari takes the reverse. It's 14 nothing Sentinel. But Big Sky, you know they're going to climb back in it. Ben Mail, he's going to get the interception. And that was kind of big because Sentinel had all the momentum at that moment in the game. And then Janicaro and company, they're going to move the ball down. Tyler Flink, he gets in the end zone. And it would be Levi Janicaro scoring a last second touchdown. Seen two upsets. Could we make it three this with Bozeman on the road taking on Senior, Oof. who hasn't lost in a couple years? And uh, boy, it looked like it. Seen yeah. second quarter, Chris Brown. Give me that, finds Logan Kleinhans for the 10 yard <laughs> score. Two point conversions, good. Bozeman leaves 15 to eight, are you kidding me? Six minutes left before half, Nolan Askelson tosses the gate. Solcer back to Askelson, takes it 25 yards for the score and it's 15 all. That's a touchdown pass for Solcer, right? Yeah, that, yep, that's how fantasy works. Count it. Yep, third quarter, Hawks up 18-15. Brown finds Ryan Simpson for the 25 yard score and Bozeman's up 24 to 15 on the number one wow. seed. But Askelson from two yards out, he scores and it's a 25-22 Bozeman lead, and then under two left in the third, it's Solcer once again on the ground from two yards out, puts Senior up 29-25, and then uh, it's Senior uh, and Solcer one more time for good measure. The Bronx survived the scare 35-25 to move on to the semis. Out of the Montana Grizzlies offensive hand, so you gotta be able to run the ball well, and then they gotta weather the storm. It is really loud here. Coach, injuries are a part of football. Um, it happens, but some are uh, tougher than others. Um, it was tough seeing Reese go down there. What was it like seeing that for you as a coach? Ah, it, it broke my heart. 26 total guys in the in the new class. How excited are you about the, the incoming guys for 2018? Well, I look old and high def. I can't believe how old I'm. Hi, you look great. You look great. Member of our broadcast team and send it over to Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, so the Grizz will be without their starting safety, Justin Strong, here today. He was suspended after being arrested in Pullman, Washington last weekend. And a couple things to look out for defensively for the Montana Grizzlies. I talked to defensive coordinator Jason Seymour, and he said schematically they're going to be mixing in a lot more zone this year. Goes in motion, handoff to Counts, up the middle, nice. Initial surge by the defense, but he gets away from two, three guys. Oh. Great block there by Taylor Martin, and he's going to dive to the pylon, and he's down. The one yard line. In small increments every four minutes or so. Timmy Falls lines it up and hits it again, of course. One of ten coming in, three of three tonight. Timmy Falls, the true freshman, on fire. So now we have fourth down. Askelson at quarterback. Fakes the handoff, has to avoid some pressure. Maybe a block in the back. Heaves it way down to Gabe Solzer, who jumps up and makes the incredible catch. And a little Superman celebration because he is Superman. What a grab, Gabe Solcer. Yeah. And the UC Irvine Anteaters, one of my favorite mascot names in all of college athletics. Anteaters, just a great, great nickname for sure. Of course, voted on by the students at UC Irvine. When the UC school started, all the students got to vote on what the mascot was. And a couple guys didn't like the other options of like Seahawks and unicorns <laughs> and golden bison. So they voted for the Anteaters. And, and there you have it. I love it. And there's oh. going to be a pitch back to an offensive lineman who's going to catch it at about the short. three, and he's short. And Flathead is going to come away with the win. CMR tries to get tricky. It doesn't work. Coach Sampson and the Braves are out on the field celebrating as they're going to beat CMR 21-13. to We have a high side, which is more of our high-risk inmates who have a series of programs and expectations to go through, which is a much more restrictive environment until they get to what we call the low side, which is uh, a lot less restrictive, a lot more movement. We have the same on the high side, it's just a little more restrictive, same amount of time, but it's kind of cut down a little bit the amount of resources they have because the goal is to have them be motivated to get from the high side to get over to the low side to get more privilege. I think sports means a lot to everybody in here. Uh, it's a release. It gets you outside of your, I don't know, how do you say it, uh, outside of yourself when you ain't got nothing to do. This is what you come out to do and everybody here loves to play sports pretty much means everything.
Time to go! Time to go! We wanted to make it, you know, we're not trying to make it a country club, but we want it to be nicer than it was. You know, we want to give these inmates opportunities. Once you get to the slow side, it's, just, it's amazing. You know, you get so much more. It's like, wow, I just got out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby, come on. Everybody here loves this sport. I mean, everybody, we got eight teams, and all eight compete really hard to try to get to that championship. Here you go, Jordan. Oh, check it, check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You're right, go, go. All the way out. Come on, Jordan. You can never forget you're in prison. And it's really not their smile and it's like, oh, I'm not here. It's just a temporary release to where they can have some fun, feel proud, winning a game, high-fiving. Big boy knows how to play. Big boy knows how to play. <laughs> Develop relationships with other people and feel good about things and laugh for a minute. Because I said, once they go back to their cell house and, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a cold place. What do you think uh, this place would be like if there were no sports? I think you'd have a lot more problems. I think you'd have a lot more fights. And the reason I say that is because you're leaving us with nothing. Now granted, do we deserve it? You know, maybe some of, a lot of us don't. A lot of states and a lot of systems are still focused in just lock them up and we've done our job. And I think for Montana to really look at it, recidivism rates and doing everything we can that when these guys leave, get in the community, they don't create a new victim. It's prison, it is harsh at times, but if you want to better yourself, the, the Montana is giving people the opportunity to better themselves and never come back. Into the uh, SWX Barbershop, everyone. I'm Sean Rainey, uh, joined by Caleb Lyons, former player, student coach, but most importantly, the uh, the team barber um, on the team. And uh, Caleb, uh, how we how we looking? I, I'm trying good, not Sean. to move my head. So we're you doing know, good. We're doing good. Yeah. Um, so he cuts a lot of the guys, uh, the players' hair on the team. And uh, you know, here's a story about his little his scoots place. Check it out. He'll field it at the 47. Cuts it right up the middle, now breaks it to the outside. After a head injury caused him to retire, former Grizz wide receiver Caleb Lyons is now a student coach. But that's not the only role he has on the Grizz, as he's become the team barber. We're going to line him up right here, and then uh, I'm just going to redo his taper. So redo that little fade right here. For wide receiver Keenan Curran and a lot of the players from out of state, it was hard to find an urban barber in Montana, so they had to give Lyons a shot. It was one time I was in the dorms and it came late night and like just hooked me up and I liked it. And I was just like, oh yeah, this guy can really cut some hair. Curran liked to cut so much he helped buy Lions new clippers and began spreading the word about his new barber. And King is the one who kind of got my confidence up and made me start, pushed me to start doing that here. Masters, uh, balding clipper, and liners. Now Lions has his own little shop in the basement of his house. At Scoot's place, the music is always bumping. And the players are lined up looking to get a fresh cut. Right here, it kind of goes back. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of like stop right here and bring it down? Yeah. yeah. You're talking about the, this right here? Yeah. I need to grow, grow these back. And Lyons has invested in his new hobby, even found a barber's chair on Craigslist. I used to have like a little computer chair, but the back would break off it sometimes, so like they would like jolt back. After studying his craft on YouTube and constantly working to get better, the players leave Scoot's place feeling fresh. He, he, he me, I'm really like a seven, but he be making me like a nine. Sometimes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> he did great. <laughs> All right, Caleb, I'm like a five, so hopefully you can make me like a seven. That's what we're planning on here. All right. Seven. All right. With an early uh, bye this season, the Montana State Bobcats spent the last week not only getting guys healthy, but taking a closer look at how their players performed in the first two weeks of the season. Kyle Sherman has the lowdown on the Cats' bye week. It's hard to talk when you're trying not to move your head. I was about to push your head down. <laughs>